Is Ripple pivoting away from XRP with their new stablecoin announcement? That's what we're going to get into today. Ripple has put out that they are introducing their own stablecoin uh, that'll be USD. They haven't given a name to it yet. Uh, some people speculate it'll be XUSD or USDX. Uh, we have, you know, USDT and a lot of the other stable coins. Um, currently, the stablecoin market is worth about $150 billion. Uh, and that's how much liquidity is there. And Tether has the majority of that, uh, which <laughs> if you've watched any of my previous videos, uh, we've talked a little bit about Tether. So this is very timely. Uh, if Tether is removed in some way uh, from providing liquidity to the larger or broader crypto market, then uh, you're going to need something else to step in and take its place. And I think Ripple, uh, with their partnerships and their credibility and their stockpile of cash, um, could definitely, you know, move in the space in a very meaningful way. Uh, they're going to have to figure out, you know, what type of reserves they're going to need to be able to facilitate, you know, uh, backing that would be required to replace Tether. That's pretty extensive. It'd be, you know, around $130 billion uh, just at its current value uh, to back that. And Tether, Really, I think what's going to happen there is they're going to get sanctioned. Um, they're they're allowing illicit activity uh, and transactions on their network between Russia and Iran and other sanctioned countries, um, and they're basically avoiding OFAC. And so, therefore, I think the U.S. is likely going to sanction them. They're a U.S. dollar denominated stablecoin, and they back their coin with treasuries. At this point, the large majority of it is treasuries that are held by one central custodian. Uh, so it's fairly reasonable that if they were sanctioned, it would freeze those assets and there would no longer be that liquidity in the crypto market, which would have some pretty significant implications. People would be running for the door. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these other digital assets, you know, you might think that Bitcoin or, or one of the other larger market caps, Bitcoin or Ethereum might garner uh, a lot of that liquidity. People would move there uh, in fear or into USDC or some of these other stable coins, uh, Ripple, like I mentioned, is launching one. Uh, but there's really only a couple assets that have legal clarity here in the U.S., according to Brad Garlinghouse in his recent statements. That's Bitcoin and XRP. Uh, so, you know, um, there seems to be a direct correlation. I'm just pointing this out uh, between the printing of Tether and the rise in Bitcoin's price. Um and so if, if Tether were to be destabilized or, or lose reserves, there probably would be a direct correlation in liquidity being removed from Bitcoin. Um, you've also got Tether has purchased, uh, I think, a little over $5 billion in Bitcoin to back uh, the or have that as reserves. The stablecoin bill that the U.S. currently has uh, on the floor uh, that has not been passed by the Senate of the House yet um, does state that a digital asset cannot be backing for the stable coin. It has to be a commodity, um, like gold tier one asset in the banking system, like treasuries, other, um, convertible notes or cash one-to-one, -one, uh, would be what you would need in order to back a stable coin on a network. And here's the piece that where XRP is not going to go anywhere. <laughs> like I stated at the beginning of the video, I've seen a lot of people out there interpret this as, okay, Ripple's pivoting away from XRP. Not the case. So if you have an issued asset on the XRPL, like a stable coin, uh, it has counterparty risk. So you're trusting that that other party uh, is actually backing it one-to-one -one with the collateral that they have. Um, and there's some other functionality on the XRPL for issued assets, like being able to freeze those assets or being able to claw them back. Uh, it'll be interesting to see which one of those or if, if any, uh, Ripple uses with its stable coin that it issues for the USD uh, on the network. Um, if it does introduce a clawback provision that could prevent that item from being used in the AMMs, uh, which go live in less than 24 hours, the fixes uh, should be pushed at that point. And we'll get to see those kick back on, which will be nice. Uh, but Regardless of that, I think Ripple doing this, even if it isn't the stablecoin of choice, right? Maybe it ends up being a USDC or a PayPal stablecoin or one of these other ones. Um, it sh it'll it'll provide a framework for other people listing stablecoins on the XRPL, which we really haven't seen up to this point. 
Uh, they've been working with central banks around the world to issue CBDCs and running pilots on private ledgers, uh, but they haven't done anything on the main net yet that's publicly available in a framework for, again, how other people should do that or introduce those stable coins onto the network. So I think this may just provide that. Maybe it's nothing more, but that's valuable in itself because now we can have even more liquidity move on to the XRPL uh, in, in the form of stable coins, which can be transacted inside of the AMMs or, or used for payments uh, and other applications. As DeFi gets built out, you're going to need stable coins for that. Um, and XRP may be given the de designation uh, by the World Bank as a stable coin, but I think of it more as a bridge currency. It's dynamic. The price will have to shift to continue to grow as more assets are brought onto the XRPL. It's the native asset that provides liquidity for the transactions on the network, and it has to be able to scale with that. So the higher the price it is, the more stable it will become, uh, but it really only needs to be stable for those three to four seconds when something's passing through it. So it can continue to aggregate value uh, over time. Um, and, and just like you know indexes in the stock market, the more value that is in something, the more value it takes to move it. So you know if you had an increase in volume on the network of a billion, but there's already you know a hundred billion market cap or a trillion dollar market cap, uh, which people have a hard time conceiving that it could go that high. Um, but realistically, I mean, there's quadrillions, uh, maybe even septillions of dollars on the planet in value that could be tokenized and brought onto the network. So anyway, uh, say you had a billion dollars, it's not going to move the price anywhere near as much as it does today. As more value is brought onto the network, uh, it'll become a high stable value. And, and that's where I think they get the term stable coin from, but it's really a bridge asset or a bridge currency. And the other piece, you know, I mentioned the, uh, the stable coins could be frozen or, or clawed back because those are some of the amendments that have been passed on the XRPL and issued assets have those capabilities. XRP is removed from that because the original account was black holed. Uh, you cannot freeze the XRP on the XRPL. You cannot claw it back uh, once it's been sent. Uh, the, really, the only thing that you can do is blacklist a wallet that's holding something, um, <clears throat> which serves as a, a way to, to mitigate risk. But it, it, there's no counterparty risk is really what it comes down to with XRP. It's an agnostic asset that can be transferred and provide value and liquidity uh, in, in a multiplicity of applications on the network. And so I think people will continue to want to use that over just a stable coin to transact between them, unless both parties agree that they want the stable coin, right? If they both want US dollars on either side of the transaction, then they'll probably use the stable coin to transact. If they want something different, on the other side of that transaction, like you're exchanging, you know, uh, your dollars for stocks and they'd have been tokenized, that'll have to go through XRP. Uh, if you're changing your dollars for another currency, that'll have to go through an intermediary, the DEX or XRP. So you're, you're going to need both. And Ripple said that in their statement, but I think there's been a lot of people that have misconstrued that or um, just don't understand really how this works. And so I wanted to provide some clarity for people in a video on it. But um, with that, uh, hopefully this has provided you some value. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all on the next one.